Hello you beautiful people and welcome to this tutorial about getting screen shakes to work with Cinemachine cameras. So um, screen shake obviously a very important part of lots of games. It gives you a lot of feedback, it adds a lot of juice. Let's see why we would want to add screen shake to the scene here. This is our hero Charlie and she is discovering a world of anger where this big volcano is about to explode as it as its uh, chimney is being uh, is, is has a ball stuck in it that is um, and then all the pressure is accumulating and if we don't save if we don't prevent this it's going to explode and destroy the world we don't want that do we but unfortunately right now we don't really feel this because we need to have some kind of an earthquake system that happens at random times to give us come kind of a feedback of there is imminent danger here so how do we do this well the first thing to look at is that we are using Cinemachine and if you take one of the virtual cameras here you have a in the Cinemachine virtual camera component, you have a noise thing here. And this noise thing allows you to select a type of noise, and this is going to be basic multi-channel Perlin, but you can define your own noise types. Uh, I'm not gonna get into this though. And then you, for that noise, you have a noise profile, and there are some pre-made noise profiles. The most useful, uh, as far as uh, my experience goes, is the 6D shake, which allows you to move, not really in six dimensions, but yeah, kind of. I mean, it moves, it moves in position, so up uh, along the Y, X, and Z axis, and it moves, it, it shakes also in terms of rotations along the um, Y, X, and Z rotation axis. So it goes in six, that's why it's called the 6D shake, right? And if you then modify the value of the amplitude gain, like if I press play right now, nothing is gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen, but if I add amplitude and frequency, then it's going to shake. And the smaller the amplitude, the smaller the movement of the shake, and the smaller the frequency, the slower the shake will move like this. This moves really slow. It doesn't really feel like a shake anymore, but you could use that if you're like on a boat, for example, you want to feel, give a feeling of a boat that works really well. But anyways, we could modify these values at runtime using a script that is totally doable. And that's how I've been doing it thus far. But today I discovered something interesting I wanted to share with you, which is called Cinemachine Impulse Listener and Impulse Source. So what is this about? Well, Let's first see how we want to trigger those earthquakes. Here I have an object that I call Earthquake Manager. And that Earthquake Manager w has a random timed event script. This is a custom script that will essentially uh, fire a Unity event uh, on random intervals. So it has an initial delay and a min minimum interval and maximum interval. And so this tick event is going to happen. And what we want is to give the camera a, a shaking impulse whenever that tick uh, happens. So we are going to add a Cinemachine impulse source component to this. And we can then drag and drop that uh, impulse source component on our tick event and then select the Cinemachine impulse source and call the generate impulse method. There's two, there's two different uh, methods. There's one that takes a float and one that takes no float. I don't exactly know the difference. Uh, between those but you can definitely try and see um, and try one and the other and see which one works i guess this is the default one and the float allows you to kind of more precisely dampen or decide uh, if you want a hard shake or a, a small shake those kinds of things then you need to configure this thing here but first let's look at what the logic of all this is so we have an impulse source and as you can see there's an impulse channel and the way it's going to work is that you're going to have impulse, an impulse source and then you're going to have impulse listeners on your Cinemachine cameras. And those impulse listeners and the impulse source is going to broadcast on 
that on on whatever channel you define you can you can send it on on one channel or multiple channel i mean by default there's just one channel but you can add as many as you want uh, and it's gonna send the signal to those channels and so any camera that is listening to that channel will receive the impulse and will treat it and for that you need to go on your camera here that you want to shake and go into the extensions and select the extension here and add a Cinemachine Impulse Listener. So this Impulse Listener, will you can define which channels you wanna to listen to. You can define a multiplier that will uh, strengthen or weaken the signal. And you can specify if you wanna use only two dimensions, which is the case here for our 2D game. So we're just gonna check this use 2D distance. We don't want our camera to move on the Z. So now that this is done, let us uh, go back to our Earthquake Manager here and look at the rest of the settings for the Cinemachine Impulse Source. So as you can see, there's a signal shape. Uh, and this is, this is how, this is going to define the value of the signal uh, over a period of time. And, and, um, then this is going to define how, what, what the amplitude and frequency are that are the maximum. And it's going to use the signal to, to kind of randomize some values. And then you can define an attack, a sustain time, and a decay time. So by default, there's a zero seconds attack, a two and two tenths of a second. Uh, I mean, a 20% sustain time. And then, yeah, it's in seconds, right? So it is 0.2 seconds sustain and the 0.7 dk uh, and it, and then there's all kinds of things like uh, impact radius which allows you to um, to do all kinds of things to say yeah you know the the you can give it essentially a distance and that's probably what the float float factor is for um, the bigger the float the bigger the distance and it will probably interpolate and then if there's an impact radius well if your float is worth more than 100 it's not going to affect but if you're a lot closer let's say Let's say you have an enemy that has that that is a giant colossus and that steps, you know, when you're a hundred a hundred meters away from that huge colossus, well, you don't want the screen to shake the same way than if you're like three meters from it, right? So that's how you can define this thing. Um, but I'm not gonna go into more details about this because we could talk for hours about this. I want to make this video rather short. So how do we fill this raw signal thing? Well, we could create our own raw signal by doing right click here, wherever you want to save those things. I, I do that in rendering cam shakes, but that's my personal preference. So we can create and all the bottom here, uh, where it's Cinemachine and, and you have noise settings. There, there's two settings actually. There's noise settings and there's fixed signal definition. Um, I don't really know how to use this fixed signal definition for the noise. I usually use noise settings. So and now when you look at the noise settings here, it's very cryptic. Like you have these, the, all these black things here. This is going to define some curves um, along which the, um, the things are going to move over, over, over the given period of time. And so... What we want to do, we don't want to make it by our by ourselves, um, unless you really you're really very specific on how you want the shake to happen. Usually, just taking a pre-made setting is easy and fine. But as you can see, if I click on the little target thing here, I actually don't have anything else than the one I've just created, which is a bit annoying. However you can actually uh, go and get the 6D cam shake um, preset. For that, you just go into your virtual camera here, the settings, and on noise profile, if you click on the little cog that's right next to the drop down menu, you can either edit the profile, clone it, locate it, or then create a new one. What we wanna do here is to clone it and then uh, when we clone, it's going to ask us where we want to save it. So I'm going to save that into rendering cam shakes and call this 
6D noise. And there we have it. We have a 6D noise and look at what it looks like. So it has three different levels of noises. Essentially, you create a first, a first, you first create a noise like, like this, right? With a frequency of 3.2 and an amplitude of 0 0.11, for example. And so this is what it's going to look like. And then you add extra layers of noises in there. And that's what's going to give this, these values. Um, I, I'm no specialist about this. I just discovered this recently. So, uh, but, but there it is. This is the 6D default settings for the noise. And we're going to just use this in our signal shape. So we drag and drop the 6D noise here. And then we can specify what the amplitude gain is, like what, what, what the relationship is. As we saw earlier, an amplitude gain of one is a lot. So instead of taking one as value here, I'm going to just go for with 0.2 and the frequency gain, I'm going to go with 0.5, which is kind of like the highest value I would go for. Um, and then with the attack, I'm just going to go with an attack of 0.1 second, just like this. And the rest we are going to keep like so. And just like this, we should be able to see some results. So let's see. So remember, there's a de delay. So we should see the first earthquake after one second. There we go. And then between four and 10 seconds. So it takes some time. There we go. Another earthquake. This one was a long one. We had to wait longer. Yeah, there we go. And so just, just like that, we've easily set up an event-driven uh, earthquake system. And now this is based on a timer, but you could just do it with any kind of things. Like if you have a big, like this big Colossus, for example, um, if you have events on your animations, uh, you could just use those events as a source for an impulse. Anyways, hope you liked this. Hope you found it interesting and see you next time. Goodbye.